Are we doing one show or two shows? We're doing two shows, Bobby. Okay. Well, you only gave me one topic. Well, the second one's a chill-out show, isn't it? Yeah, but that's just a chill-out show on the news and stuff. Well, uh... So we got, we're going to have to have a second topic as well. Well, the thing so, is, I was going to ask you, if you had an overlay for three people, would you be able to get someone at short notice? What is the f- Season 2, Episode 16 of the Nintendo PlayStation Podcast. I am Bobby, the Nintendo Guru, joined by my special guest host, Mr. Toby Thornton. What is up, Toby? Special guest host? I know I'm special, Bobby, but that's not my title. Well, I mean, it's, it's going to have to be for a little bit here, because, you know, it's just... It's, it's a new, new, new year, New Year's coming up. It's just the way it's going to be for now and for a while. Bobby, I don't like your attitude right now. <laughs> Yeah, listen, you can thank Mr. Sean Capri for that, because he actually texted me last night, late last night, and said, when, on the episode, call Toby your special guest host. Mr. Sean Capri. Oh, it's like, that is amazing. I'm not very happy right now. <laughs> We're going to have like, words. Uh, that's, you, guys, <laughs> you can have Twitter words. Go ahead. Have, your, have it out. Yeah. Um, Toby, how you doing, buddy? You know, I'm a bit poorly today, Bobby. A bit got a little bit of a, a little bit poorly. I've got a little bit of a cold right now. Oh boy. Yeah. Yesterday I felt that way. Yesterday I felt a little. When I woke up, I felt a little glum, yeah. a little under the weather, and then after about ten fifteen minutes, cleared up. Yeah. Like right now, I feel a little congested. Feel yeah. a little, But like after about ten fifteen minutes, I'll clear up and hopefully. You know, you know what good. made me feel better though was. Uh, Seeing Tom Cruise in Mission Impossible Fallout last night. Oh, really? Yeah, I got I got the bl- the Blu-ray for it, and there's like, I won't spoil anything, but there's a there's a fight scene in it that was just amazing, unbelievable. He is man, he is such an under respected action star. Yeah, definitely. Like, like he does, I don't feel like he gets the credit for his action movies the way he does for his other movies, and it's just. Yeah. Oh my god, dude! The Mission Impossible movies are fantastic. Even yeah, the Jack love. Reacher movies are really good. Oh yeah, definitely. I loved. I loved the first Jack Reacher. I thought that movie was fantastic, man. Yeah, second one's a bit forgettable, but the first one. Yeah, the first good. one was amazing. Yeah, but I would love, you know, I would love to see him in more stuff. He's just oh, he's so good, so good. Um. Toby, let's kick this episode off like we do each and every episode with our geek outs. That's a great idea, Bobby. We should do that every episode. <laughs> you know what? You know what? That's uh, this is why you're a special guest host. <laughs> it's, uh, um, what are you geeking out about? I'm geeking out about something I just discovered via Twitter. Oh, boy. I don't know if you've heard, heard this, Bobby, right? Benji Kong on Twitter, at Benji Kong. Uh, he did a rap for the 2018 Switch Up. It's on the Switch Island Nintendo Podcast YouTube channel. And, dude, this rap is amazing. Really? He he has digs at Philip Musin. He goes over all of his favorite games on the Switch this year. Like, all of my favorite indie games really? he, he raps about. It, there's even a little bit of Sean Capri in there. No. So yeah, man. It, and I was like, "Whoa, this guy's a professional." Sean like, Capri's in there. There's a well. There's a uh, there's a little nod to Sean Capri in there, and a little mini clip. So I gotta check that out. Switch Island. Uh, it's called yeah, Switch Island Nintendo Podcast, and it, is... the video is 2018 Switch. Up. Why does that name sound familiar? I'm not sure. I I can't remember. Like, there's got to be people we know doing that, right? Yeah, there's got to be. Uh, but it was. Why do um, I think Gary Gray when I hear that? But I don't. I could be wrong. Yeah. There's something that, that's making me. But sad. definitely look it up, man. I mean, it is so unbelievably good. This guy is. But is the link? It, so it's on their. Uh, it's on their. Uh... Gra- uh, Grouchy Surge was the one who 
we linked it on Twitter or something. Okay. And... Oh, okay, the Switch Island. I got you. I got. I yeah. follow them on Twitter. I know who they yeah. are. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's yeah. Okay, I have to check it out. They're from England. Yeah. I have to check it out. Pro- professional man, like so good. Like I've been listening to it on repeat all morning. <laughs> really? Yeah, it's so good. I have to check it out after the after the You're show. You're gonna love it. I have yeah. to check it out. Um, I'm geeking out about a little movie that I watched yesterday called Aquaman, Ooh. and I went into this thing. I'm actually recording an episode of Secret Friends Unite at twelve o'clock today with uh, Todd Oxtra and Charlie Carden, and. Uh, I went into this movie with zero expectations. It it crept up on me. And normally with DC movies, like, I'm all over it, man. I know the release date. I'm ready for it. I'm ready to go. Yeah. And just, I'm just, in the past couple of years, man, the attacks on DC and all the stuff that happens, I'm just tired of everybody telling, telling me how DC does things wrong and it's a mess. So... I just really, this one flew under the radar because I just paid no attention to it at all. About a week ago, two weeks ago, I started to hear grumblings about, like, it's a good film and all that. Went into this movie not expecting anything, not really knowing a whole lot about Aquaman's uh, backstory and such. Like, I mean, I know who Aquaman is. I know what he does and all that stuff. But, like, I didn't really know his origin story and how everything. Yeah. Man, I was blown away. Yeah. This movie is so freaking good, man. Like, you need to go see this movie. Everybody really? needs to go. It is, man, it is nonstop action from the get. Like, it starts off, and you're like, you're thinking like, oh, this is going to be like a slow draw. And it's like, boom, 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 boom. It's like nonstop, man. It is such a good story, such yeah. a good film. And even when you're sitting there thinking like, oh, you know, like, you get to these moments where, like, I never got into this moment where I was just, like, pull, pulled out of the film thinking, like, how much time's left. Like, it's just, you're in there for a ride and you just go. It's yeah. really such a good film, man. That's cool, man. Jason I mean, Rowe is a great, he plays a great Aquaman. It, it's amazing. Yeah. I uh, got four four vibes, like, from the trailers that I've seen. Um I yeah, thought four was all right, but no, it, it was very. It's it's very kind of like it. It gives you that feel a little bit, yeah. like like a, a Thor type feel to it. it. Dude, it is just a lot of great actors in it too, man. Yeah. Like a lot of actors that you, Nicole Kidman's in it, um, Dolph Lundgren's in it, like um, Willem Dafoe is in it. Like there's there's some really good actors in there, man. Yeah, it's cool. What was I look for? Cause Tom Cruise ain't in it, so why would I, why would I go see it? Is there a rumor he's going to be a superhero? I hope so, man. Tell, tell I me thought that's there true. was a rumor that DC was was going to him to either be a hero or something or a superhero or something. He should be the next Batman. I thought. Oh, you know what? I thought I heard that he was in talks to be in Green Lantern. Oh, really? Oh. He should not be Batman. <laughs> he's too short for Batman. That's true. Batman's like a big. Hulk, yeah, you know, scary true. figure. Um, the other thing too is like while I was sitting there, they had the trailer for Shazam. Dude, uh-huh. that looks amazing. Does it? I, I don't know if you. I don't know if you've seen anything about Shazam. Do you no, know who Shazam is? Nothing. No. <laughs> it's, it's, a, it's a young boy who gets these powers. Yeah. That when he says Shazam, he turns mm. into a superhero, and he turns into like a Superman. It's really good, man. It's yeah, good it sounds show. rubbish. But no, you know. it's not. It's really, it's really good. But what happens is, is like he starts out and he's just like doing goofy stuff, yeah. but then like he slowly becomes and realizes like I have responsibilities as you know. So it's pretty. It's, it looks, dude. It looks awesome. Okay. It really does. Take your take your word for it, Bobby. Well, because uh, what gets me excited too is Shazam's arch nemesis is Black Adam. And right. that's supposed to be coming out as well, and that's The Rock. The Rock's going to be playing Black Adam. Not, not Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Yeah, man. He's <laughs> awesome. I love him, dude. Uh, that, that dude, I could I could eat him up with a spoon, boy. He's just, he's a man. <laughs> <laughs> no, I love The Rock. Rock is the best, man. I love him. Um, okay, so right now we're going to jump into our news topics. 
um, or our news stories. And what, the way this works, because it's been a little bit since we've done this, uh, I will read off three Nintendo news articles. Toby will pick the one that he wants to hear out of those three. Toby will then read uh, three PlayStation topics, and I will pick the one that I want to hear from him, and then we will read them and, and discuss them a little bit. So, um, all right, uh, my three are, I have... The NES controllers are unnecessary um, for the Switch. The, the, you know, the, the, the ones that Nintendo put out for the Switch. Yeah. Uh, the Nintendo Switch has already passed lifetime sales of the base PS4 system in Japan. And Nintendo will be taking the court over illegal pre-shop or e-shop pre-ordering system. The pre-shop. Yeah, the pre-shop. <laughs> uh... I'm interested in that first one about the controllers. I want to know why they're unnecessary. Okay. This is a... Let's see. We're opening this article up real quick. Where the hell did you go? Where did you go? Okay, here we go. Where did you come from? Where did you go? Where did you come from? Cutting that joke. This article comes from Engadget, and it says, Nintendo Switch NES gamepads are an unnecessary blast from the past. So... Um, how much would you pay to be transported back to the 8-bit era? Nintendo already gave us a taste of nostalgia with the $60 NES Classic and now is offering a similar experience with a pair of NES controllers for the Switch. The big downside, they cost $60 and they're only available for Switch Online subscribers. And not only yeah. that, it comes with a surprise of practically uh, useless outside of NES games on the Switch. That's not true, but we'll continue. Um, I'll be honest, <clears throat> I've never really liked the NES controllers as a kid. I hated it. So this is more, more like an opinion piece, essentially. Um, yeah. And he's saying, you know, he didn't like them as a kid. Um, the way they dug into your palms, unlike the the SNES ones that were rounded uh, with a more ergonomic gamepad. Gamepads were the same on both of them, but whatever, dude. Um, which also think- featured more buttons. On yeah. the front and better directional pad uh, and the shoulder buttons. I was happy to let my NES gather dust. The SNES controller was such a groundbreaking design and influence. So I guess essentially what he's getting at here and the way the article's going is, is he just feels like the NES controllers are a waste of money, that there's not a whole lot to play with him, and, you know, it's just it's and he's also upset the fact that you have to be a Switch Online customer or a Nintendo Online customer to yeah. get them. Um, yeah, I think he's missing the point of them to begin with, big time. Um, because you know, all right. So the 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 obvious reason why they want you to have Switch Online is because that's the only way that you're going to be playing NES games on your Switch right now. Yep. So what's the point of even having them anyway? However, you you sort of hinted at the fact that some games are compatible with it. Yeah, man. I played right? uh, Alwa's Awakening with it. Yeah. Um, I, my understanding is Shovel Knight also people are playing with it. Um, you just have to remap the pe- you just have to remap the button sometimes. Right. Like, okay. Alwa's Awakening, you just remap it and it works perfectly. I imagine something like the Messenger would be great for it. Yep. Um, yep. Dead Cells, but... I don't think Dead Cells works, but... <sighs> but, um... I think the the price, uh, you know, when you do compare it to the NES Classic, the price of them is a bit, I don't know, it seems a bit off, really, because you get way more for your money with the, the NES Classic. You you only got one controller, though, is that right? Yes, the only NES one controller on the NES Classic. So, you know, I don't know, but the the value definitely doesn't feel there for me. I mean... I suppose they're wireless, which is a benefit. Yeah, they are. I'll be honest. So, with so you. That, that's pretty cool. So, okay, I'm, I was actually getting ready to do, which I'm probably going to do today or tomorrow, um, a just like a a review on them. Yeah. Um, I had someone reach out to me and ask me to do a review on them, and to me, the D pad, the buttons, everything about it is so much better. Than the game, than the pro controller. Um, you would think that the pro controller just feels really good, but this thing, number one, the ret, like this bar across the top, 
At first, yeah. I thought it would be annoying to me, but actually, yeah. it feels good to rest your fingers up there. Yeah. Um, that extra little bit actually feels better on it. Um, but to play with the buttons on it, it's just really it feels good, man. It it it's the D pad is the best D pad ever. It's better than the Pro Controller D pads. Like it just feels comfortable. The minute you get yeah. this and you start playing NES games. It just feels back like you're back at home. Now, I guess that has a lot to do with that's the era I grew up in. So it just brings all these memories flushing back to me. But man, it, it just works really well, man. I, I'm I played let me put it this way. I was playing Tecmo Bowl the day they came out. Dare I say I got better at Tecmo Bowl when I started playing with them controllers. Like mm. At will, I was doing stuff. It wasn't even a second thought. Like, the Pro Controller is a fantastic controller, don't get me wrong. But that D-pad just isn't as good. And when I was playing with this thing, man, I was just, like, picking people off, intercepting, just doing whatever I wanted to do. Like, just crushing people with this Mm -hmm. thing. So, I really think that, I mean, I was beating people pretty good before. But, like, it just felt like I was scoring at will. And just doing much more with it. Played some Ninja Gaiden with it as well. Just felt better. The jumps, the the flow, the fluidity. The fluidity. I don't think that's a word. Um, Was just really spot on with it. I think they're fantastic. The The price is a little steep. But also, for people that are complaining that you can only get them if you have Nintendo Online, just stop it already. What What's the point of having them if you don't have Nintendo Online? Yeah, Like, the bulk of the reasoning... Like, it's funny how he says, well, they're only really necessary... They're only really good for NES games that they give you at Nintendo Online. But you can only get... Like, it's like, you're an idiot. You're complaining that you can only get them if you are if you play them on Nintendo Online. And then you're complaining that you can only really use them with the Nintendo games. And it's like, uh, the only way you're getting the Nintendo games is if you have Nintendo Online. Like... Yeah, and in, in the article, he's like, oh, I much prefer the design of the SNES controller... Well, there aren't any SNES games yet. Exactly. So what's so, the point of putting Yeah, out? what is the point? Yeah. And the other thing, too, when I when I look at it is I just sit there and I go, like, man, it's, like, so Nintendo opens it up to everybody. To me, this was the perfect thing they could have done because it eliminates scalpers. Yeah. Eliminated scalpers. The only way you can get it is to have the, the system because people weren't going to pay 20 bucks just to buy these controllers. Just to go, and you can only get one set. That was the other thing that was perfect about it. So you can yeah. only get one set. So why am I going to buy an account for twenty bucks, and then I have to go make a bunch of accounts? Yeah. It, it was to me, it was the perfect move by Nintendo. It was a way to eliminate all them jack offs that we all get mad about. So, Toby, what uh, what news articles do you have for us today? All right, I've got. Bethesda gives Fallout 76 players Fallout Classic Collection on PC. Days Gone multiplayer was pitched, but Sony said no. And Ubisoft was working on a new Splinter Cell at one point. Hmm. I'm torn between the first one and the second one. What was the second one again? Uh, Days Gone multiplayer was pitched, but Sony said no. Yeah, okay, right there. Let's, let's hear the first one, Bethesda. All right. This is just a a continuing thing with Bethesda right now. Like, it's story after story after story about Fallout 76. Um, So the article says, Bethesda has had quite the uphill battle with Fallout 76, and it's doing its best to win back some much-needed positive reputation, which I agree with. Mm -hmm. Case in point, the publisher has said it will be handing out free copies of Fallout Classic Collection to all those who played the buggy online title in 2018. The collection, which includes Fallout, Fallout 2 and Fallout Tactics, might be PC only, but the freebie will be given to those playing on PS4 too. It's a nice holiday gesture and anyone with a half-decent computer should be able to enjoy the trio of games with no trouble. Uh, so... I thought it was quite interesting. I mean, they said that it's, they're only giving it away to anyone that played it in 2018. Mm-hmm. So I guess they're targeting the hardcore players that feel burnt by the game yeah. in the buggy state it was released in. Yeah. And I think that's a, actually, you know, 
props to them for doing that. Yeah, because they didn't have to do it. They didn't have to. No, I mean, there was a fiasco with the canvas bag. That's separate. Like yeah. that's not really to do with the game itself. No, this is their apology of we made a mistake putting out a real buggy game. So here's our apology for that. And you know, I think that's really real good. I just, good on I them. just think where they messed up is they should have. Like, they treated this game like they treated any of their other games. And a buggy game really shouldn't be happening in the first place. But Bethesda's known for their buggy games. But the problem is, is a buggy game and a buggy online game are just a nightmare. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of people that have games that are, like... When you have these MMO games, they normally run beta tests for months to try to get all the bugs wiped out of it. Bethesda really didn't run a beta test on this thing. Like, they did, but it wasn't that long. No, um, and it was uh, it, the beta was right before the game came out anyway. Yeah, so, it, yeah. so they should, in my opinion, they should have taken about six to eight months just to spend a little time on it, massage it, get everything worked out of it that, you know, all the kinks worked out of it that needed to be worked out of it, and kind of get things in the right direction. Now, I haven't played the game. Um, I did watch Chelsea Capri stream it the other day, uh, last week, for a little bit. And, uh, and, and you know, I was I was... I kind of was like, this looks a lot like Fallout 4. Like, mm -hmm. fans of Fallout 4 should be fans of this, you know? Yeah. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's. I think people just wanted that single-player campaign where they just get out and lose their minds. And I think this is a totally different game that people got to get. They have to wrap their minds around a little bit that this is not going to be what you're expecting, you know? Mm -hmm. So, um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty much how I feel. Yeah, I think that... You know, before this, they had a lot of, like, bad vibes around Bethesda. People were wondering, like, you know, is their next game going to be buggy? Like, is this going to affect sales of future games? But I think doing something like this is a, is a good way to sort of just make people calm down a bit. And yeah. say that they're not the bad guys that we're all making them out to be. Yeah. They can learn from their mistakes, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, you know, we'll see in the future, but... Yeah, it's a good gesture. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, okay, so we're going to jump into our topics now, and I will go first to continue the, the back and forth of this all. Uh, Nintendo topic. Rumors of a January Direct are swirling. So I'm curious, A, do we think that the Direct will hit in January? If not, where do we think it lands? And then what do we think, realistically, Nintendo hits with? and talks about and shows off in the, that direct. Mm -hmm. So let's start with the beginning. Do you, do you feel like we're going to get a direct guarantee it? Really? What makes you so, yeah. so sure about it? Cause they had a, they had one in January last year. It was a mini direct. Uh, but I think that they quite often, I don't think they do it every year, but I think quite often it's a good way to kick off the year for Nintendo. I think the last time they didn't do one was in 2014. Hmm. But then at that point, they really didn't have a lot going on. Yeah. Um. I don't know, man. I'm. I'm. Part of me wants of it. Part of me doesn't care. I don't. You know what I mean? Like, um, look, I love directs. Like the next guy. You know what I mean? Like, I, I'm. I'm into them things, big time. But I like Nintendo does this thing where they do these different types of directs. They do ones where they just drop them, yep. and there's no announce. Like there's announcement, but it's like they just drop it. It's a video. Yeah. It's not live. It's not. Yeah. It just feels different. Um, those ones are one thing. Then they do the ones where they're game centric, and then they do ones where they're like they feel like they're full on a direct. Um, yeah. I don't want a mini direct. If Why we're gonna not, get Bobby? it, huh? Why not? I want a full direct, man. I want it, I want that feeling of like everybody's watching it together. It's live. It's a thing. Mm -hmm. Like that yeah. just makes me not that it's live, but it's it's airing live. So 
meaning like it's simulcast at the same time. Everybody jumps yeah. in and it's going, and you have to be yeah. there at the because the thing is, is the other one is like, oh, I'll just watch it later. It's a recorded thing, and 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 granted, you can do the same thing with a different door, but the vibe and the feel is just different with a yeah. live one. And the mini direct are just, I want to know what's going on in 2019. I don't want to get <clears throat> this little trickle out of like, oh, well, here's some stuff you knew was coming, and then here's one extra thing. You know what I mean? Like, I want to know where we're heading. and and uh, But it also leads me into the, to the mindset of, do you think we'll get two? Do you think we'll get an Indies and a regular one? I think it will be one or the other. I don't think we'll get two. You don't think we'll get... See, because typically they do two. I don't the know, only, man. The only like, time they didn't do two was when they did the Gamescom one this year. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I mean, it, an indie direct wouldn't be bad. You know, I love I love seeing indie games on yeah. on Switch. Yeah. Uh. But like, I don't know. So I mean, okay. I, I I wrote down some thoughts of what could be in it if it was a proper direct. Yeah, it's a prop. Let's so let's look at it and say it's a proper direct that we're gonna get. Um, what do you realistically think they show off? I think we'll definitely get a Smash DLC character reveal. You think? Yeah. Hmm. I don't think so, man. I think it all depends on when Joker's hitting. Because Joker's supposed to be the first character. <clears throat> so. How many characters are they five. having? Five. five. So I reckon that'll be. I, I don't know how many directs they're going to do, but they could at least do one. Or two per direct throughout the well, year. Well, you got to also remember, too, is that they said that the, the characters would go into 2020. Right. Um, so they can. They can spread them out. Have at least one in each direct throughout um, the year. They That's could. A nice, it's, I don't know. It's just a cool thing to get okay. people talking about the directs every time. Yeah. Um, um, I don't agree with it. I mean, <clears throat> I just don't think they're going to. I think they're going to kind of distance themselves a little bit from that. Uh, but who knows? Who knows? Either. I mean, stay, Smash is selling unbelievably well. Like, oh I think they want to ride that wave yeah. and push that momentum forward. You're probably right. You're probably right. I'm not going to say that I'm wrong. or I'm, I'm not going to say that I'm right. Um, what character do you think they could reveal, though, <clears throat> if they did? Listen, in realistic terms, this is what I feel. I feel like the next character that comes out is probably going to be a Dragon Quest character. Dude, um, that's a sick, sick pick. I like that. Yeah, I, I think that like even if it's just an enemy or something, I don't see everybody's talking about like Banjo Kazooie and all these different characters and all these Western characters. I don't think Nintendo is going to show a Western character for the rest of this. These five characters, what Nintendo has basically said was. Um, they're trying to build relationships with these characters. They're trying to be a surprise with everything. So I don't mm. think it's things that people are, it's on their radars. I think a Dragon Quest character is it, it's a, it's a tie to a franchise that's massive in Japan, yeah. massive in Japan. So you get these characters. That, yeah. that are huge in Japan, and then you just get them, and it's like, hey, here it is, and this is what you do. And I think it helps drive the narrative for Japan. That and would it, be a great pick as well, because Dragon Quest is coming to Switch. Exactly. That's another... So I, that's my opinion. That's what I think yeah. the next one will be. I was thinking a bit more pie in the sky with it. Of course you were. You know, you know everyone thinks uh, the Master Chief or Banjo-Kazooie would mm -hmm. be great to get, you know, because they're a bit friendly with Xbox. Yeah. I think Minecraft Steve would be the biggest character ever for, oh, my, God, for, please uh, don't. Please don't. for Smash. Please don't, no. I don't want that stupid character in this game. Dude, he's got so many things that he could have as moves, you know. Oh, he's going to pull a pickaxe out this time, and here's a shovel, and here's and an, a bow and arrow. And, get and he can here. throw some dirt blocks. Get he can, like Stop. Dude, Stop. come on! No, garbage. The kids, the kids would go nuts for the that. Kids. Nobody plays Minecraft anymore, Toby. There's about five people that play Minecraft. <laughs> <laughs> um, so for me, I think, I think we see more Yoshi. Um, I think that's a definite that we see more Yoshi. 
Yeah. I think that they're going to kind of like. I keep forgetting about that game. I think we get a, a release date, like a firm release date, yeah. and I think it's in the early portion of 2019, and that's why they talk about it. And I think they they show off some more play mechanics and such. Yeah, I think they'll be the, the same with a uh, Fire Emblem. Two houses? Is it two or three houses? Three houses. Three houses. Three houses. Yeah, yeah I, I think we definitely get some Fire Emblem because they haven't talked yeah. about that game at all. Yeah, at not all. since three was it? Mm-hmm. Yeah, and it's uh, I keep saying it too, like oh, they're going to talk about Fire Emblem, they're going to talk about, Fire... and they every time I bring it up, they just they don't talk about it, and I think yeah, at some point, especially when I think about like the last Fire Emblem game, like man, they were talking about that every single direct. Yeah. Like, they really pushed that game. And I, I'm i excited for this game. Three Houses, I am so fired up about. I can't wait. I just wish it looked better, man. Well, look better in, in what terms? I mean, just like the strategy, like the where you're seeing the troops from the top down and it's like grid-based, that whole thing. Just looks real bad. Yeah, but they didn't they didn't they show off this footage where it's like the battles feel like real battles now and yeah, it's like the camera cool, spins and... I don't know. I just think they could have made more of an effort with the st- strategical isometric viewpoint. Uh, I disagree, man. I like it. I think it looks good. I'm happy about it. I, w- I can't wait to see more of it, man. I'm really fired up for this game. I can't wait. Mm-hmm. Like, cause I love that. I love that franchise. I love that series. So yeah. and it's crazy because I never wanted anything to do with it and then the past couple of games just really wrote me in man like i really fell yeah. in love with that game um what so you so you think of fire emblem yeah i think i think we get a little touch of animal crossing but i think it's more in line of we get a name for the game mm-hmm. um if it launches in march which i'm thinking it's going to launch in march then I think this is quasi pie in the sky, but it's also what I really think is going to happen. I think they're going to show the name of the game, mm-hmm. the release date, and they're going to show off a new Switch console for it and just say, like, this is something you could get with it. Um, I don't think we get any Amiibo with that game because mm-hmm. I, th- I feel like Nintendo got a little burned with the last offering of Amiibo. But then again, I don't know. They might come out and double down with it. Nintendo's I wonder if uh, Amiibo cards would be compatible with it. I'm curious. I really am curious. Um, part of me doesn't want them to be, at least not right away. Or or I would like it to be like they're compatible, but you have to get you have to unlock it. It has to get to a certain point. Because yeah. I, I don't like the idea of starting the game off and just yeah. being able to scan in my favorite villagers. I, I think it would be cool if you could scan the card and it unlocks a 3D f- model in the game. Like, you, your character collects their own version of Amiibo that you can just look up and spin around in the game and display on your shelves cool. and stuff. kind of cool. Yeah. I would like to get that maybe rather than the, uh, the portraits because they... Normally, they give you portraits of themselves. Like, when you become yeah. best friends with a character and they leave yeah. town, they'll mail you a portrait. That's kind of always been kind of cool. Um, yeah, I would like to, I would just like to be able to unlock it. Like, to be like, hey, man, kind of like how you can get the patterns after you, like, do something for seven. I think you have to talk to Sable or Abel for, like, eight days straight. And then you can unlock the the QR machine to, like, scan in stuff and, and yeah. do, like... That's kind of cool to me. Um, so stuff like that. Uh, but I'm curious. I'm, I, that game has me very curious of what they're going to do to how they're going to handle it. I think, because I think personally, if Nintendo is coming up a little short with their estimated 20 million units sold this year, which if you listen to analysts, they're saying they're going to come up about 3 million units short. To me, Animal Crossing is probably their last ditch effort to move a lot of consoles just because you could do that special edition and you'll get people double dipping, but you'll also get the animal crossing fans jumping on for the first time. Um, cause I think there are a lot of animal crossing fans that haven't gotten a console yet yeah, and are waiting. So I think it's a way to, to kill two birds with one stone. Mm. Well, I actually don't think they're going to show any animal crossing. Really? If it, if, yeah. 
I think they're going to wait until E3 because I think the game's going to be out a uh, holiday next really? year. Really? Yeah, I think they're going to do like they did this like this year with Smash and Pokemon Let's Go. I think they're going to have Pokemon and Animal Crossing as their big titles around Christmas. Man, I feel like that's a mistake. I really feel like that's a mistake. And the reason why I say that is the the games kind of cross over in terms of fan base and I think you want to kind of keep those games separated. I mm. almost see I almost feel like Animal Crossing and Pokemon are your bookends like in 2017 with Zelda and Mario were your bookends. Yeah. I feel like you hit in March with with Animal Crossing and then at the end of the year you hit them with Pokemon. I mean it would be nice. Like I don't, I just think that they would they they wouldn't have that short of a gap between proper reveal and release. I think if if they're going to show it in January, it won't be out until summer. It's interesting. It's an interesting idea. You got to also remember too. My thing is is and the way I've always felt is Animal Crossing doesn't show well at all. Um, and I, I think feel, it needs its own direct. Well, though. absolutely, yeah. it, it needs its own direct because it needs to show off what's new about it, what's different about it. Um, also, and that's why that's why I said like a lot of that. What I would say was pie in the sky stuff. But yeah, if they did show it at E three, then they could spend all day on Treehouse live streaming that game. They and could. I, that would that would give you a good feel for the game. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. I agree mm-hmm. with that a lot. Um, I think we get a couple of new announcements, just a couple, nothing major. Mm-hmm. Um, that's pretty much it. I think they focus mainly on the beginning portion of 2019. Do you think we'll see anything Paper Mario or Pikmin related? I feel like they're E3 things. Yeah. I feel like any major massive new announcement might get held off. Um... But I and I and I'll be honest with you. I feel like this this direct is kind of going to kind of be melancholy. I think people are going to go in with these huge expectations and get let down. And I and I hate to say that, but I I just really feel that. I feel like there's they're going to be missing. It's not going to be what people are expecting. It's yeah. not going to be this massive game, this massive announcements that get people hyped for. I feel like this is just hey man, here's just what kind of what we're working on. Just give you a little taste of what's going on. And then that's it. I don't think there's anything major that gets announced. What about SNES games for Nintendo Online? Oh, man. Holy cow. If they did that, ooh, that would be, first off, that'd be amazing. Really. I think that that would make, that would entice a lot of people to join the program. You know, because I think that NES games, like, they appeal to a certain age group. Um, but I think anyone that grew up with the SNES as their first console, like, I think they'd be more likely to jump into Nintendo Online, you know? <laughs> I think... I think the Super Nintendo is the far superior console. I feel like it the is, Super yeah. Nintendo is the best console they've ever had in terms of a game library. Mm. And, man, if you could bring that, like, that would be the answer to me. Like, start trickling those games out. Maybe do a thing where you do like two NES games, one Super Nintendo game each month. Yeah. You know, and, and to me, it would get people, man, to play Super Mario World and Link to the Past, and Super Metroid, yeah. and all, all these great games, man. All, yeah, sign definitely. Me up, man. Sign me up. It, it really excites me as well that they do things like they add multiplayer. Mm-hmm. And even if it's just turn taking, like, Somebody dies in Link to the Past, the other person gets to play. Yeah. Like, something something like that. Or... Well, that's what they do in the, the other one. Like, yeah. dude, I would love to play uh, play Link to the Past with you and play yeah. past the controller. Where it's just yeah. like, we play together and we just, you know, I die, I give you controls. You die, you give yeah, me yeah. controls. Or I do a dungeon, you do a dungeon. Yeah, like, man. It, it'd be, yeah. oh, so awesome. It'd be so yeah. awesome. That's something that we would have to, we would have to do that where we stream that, man. Oh, definitely. Definitely yeah. do that. So, um. Okay, Toby, what what uh what do you got for us topic wise? Uh so I was just thinking, like, do we really need a PlayStation five in twenty nineteen or even twenty twenty? Like, do we really feel like the PS4 is 
really that bad that we need a new console to replace it yes so that is all thank you god no (laughs) (laughs) no i actually don't think it is i feel personally i feel like it's it's too early man i feel like you have not my my opinion has always been this you end a console when you've tapped the resources Mm. on the console that you have yeah uh yes i understand that the playstation 4 is probably pushing what eight years old maybe nine the ps4 no the ps4 just turned five dude oh wow i thought it was why do i think it was longer than that i think because i thought it came out the same time the wii u did and i did and it came out like a year or two after the wii u yeah Um, that's right Okay, so five years old, yeah. So if you're saying six or seven, I think that's too early, man. Like, I don't feel... So here's the thing. When they when they finally ended the PS3, they hit us with a game in Last of Us that when you looked at that game, you were like, how the hell did this game fit on a PS3? Like, what is... This is insanity. Yeah. They're nowhere near that with a PS4. Yeah. I feel like... You know, I feel like they're just starting to really hit their strides. I don't feel like they're pushing these these con- this console at all to its limits, especially the Pro. You just put the yeah. Pro out a couple of years yeah. ago. Um, like the Pro came, the Pro was literally what two years ago, right? So yeah. this is madness, in my opinion. Like yeah. I don't think you, I don't think they're ready for an upgrade. Honestly, no, I and mean, yeah, I agree. Like. Um, I feel like the games have only just started to get really good. Yeah. Like first couple of years of PS4, the games weren't that technically weren't that impressive. A lot of ports. Yeah. Then we started getting more original games that were built from the ground up for the PS4. You are getting games last year like God of War and Spider Man and Red Dead. Mm-hmm. Like we haven't even had a proper Grand Theft Auto for the PS4. Mm-mm. You know they had the port, upgraded port. Yeah. But it'd be the only the only PlayStation console that hasn't had its own dedicated GTA, yeah. which is real weird, man. Yeah. Like, you know, you said The Last of Us was pushing the PS3. So was GTA 5. Yeah. Um, so we haven't had a GTA 6 yet. Mm-hmm. I think you can't really call it uh, a console complete <laughs> with, without a Grand Theft Auto. Dedicated Again, I just think it's... I think the problem is with Sony is their thunder is getting stolen quite a bit by Nintendo and they're scrambling in sorts to try to figure out how do we get the momentum back in our, our court? Um, yes, they just had Spider-Man and God of War. They had their game of the year, but I feel like when you're talking about what's in the news week in week out, it's Nintendo and the switch. And I feel like Sony is, I think Sony did hurt themselves a little bit by not doing crossplay sooner. Um, it started to put a bad taste in people's mouths. Like, but now they're starting to get back on. The, I think they righted that ship a little bit, and they're moving in the right direction again. Um, but I think they're also muddied up a little bit because they're trying to figure out what they're doing with PlayStation VR and the Vita's ending. And I think they're in this weird area now of, like, they don't have a lot really happening for them. For me, personally, I just say, man, stay the course. Like, you have 88 million units sold right now. That's a lot of units, man. Yeah. Like, if it was me, I would kind of start waning out and getting rid of the old, like, the, the Slim, the PS4 Slim, and just yeah. pushing the pro. Half the pro is the standard model. Yes, yeah, I agree. And, and that would be the way I would because my 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 feeling is is why would you upgrade? Why did you throw the pro out there? I know why they threw the pro out there because they were scared of what Xbox was doing, and they yeah. thought Xbox would steal the power from them. But yeah. you were crushing it, man. They should have never put if they were going to if they're going to launch the PS5. This year, or, next, or 2019 or 2020, I feel like there was no reason to put the Pro out there, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wouldn't you be happy with games of the quality that we had last year for another couple of years? Like The Last of Us Part Two. you know that's going to be amazing. You know that's going to push the limits of the console, too. So I feel like when that game finally launches, that's probably the end of the life cycle. And that game's not coming for another two years. Guarantee you, man. We're not going to see that game. 
Heck, we will not see that game in 2019, and we'll probably see it at the end of 2020 if we're lucky. I think we might see it next year. Mm, I don't might. Think, I don't think we see it 2019 at all. At all. It's nowhere near ready, man. It's not anywhere near ready. I the think it's like, uh, you know, even with games less graphic, graphically intensive, like Spyro, mm-hmm. like that game is unbelievably gorgeous. Ratchet and Clank, amazing cartoony looking games. I can't, I mean, maybe it's just my limited capacity, right? But I can't picture game like cartoony games looking yeah. better than that. So unless they're like, oh, we can't do realism real enough on the PS4, like, I don't know. I mean, what's going to be the, the real selling feature of the PS5? I don't know, man. My thing is, you know, and maybe it's just, like I said, it's the era I grew up in and all, but, like, you got a console and you knew that thing was with you for close to 10 years. I mean, it didn't always hit 10 years, but it, it came close to it. And I think that when you're, again, if they would have never did the upgrade then yeah, I can see it coming. Cause then you're looking six, seven years. Okay. Yeah. But five years and you did an upgrade two years ago. So in my opinion, no, you you're still, in my opinion, the PS4 is technically only two years old cause you just did that upgrade. So it's like, what was, again, I keep harping on it, but it just does, doesn't make any sense to me why you do the upgrade. If you're going to then get a new console out in two years, like it should have been, or this year, in 2019, like if literally like, Man, in three years, you're doing an upgrade already? Like, that makes no sense. Yeah. I don't know. I, I just think that they should hold on. There's still, I feel like there's still more to the story. But the other thing, too, is like, man, you know, I would have loved to seen, like, another Ratchet and Clank game, you know? And, like, I feel like they have these franchises that they haven't really tapped into yet. Yeah. And it's like, go back into the well, man. Get. To, I feel like Sony's in this weird place of, like, they have franchises, and it's like, they're not really pushing. Like, I, I'm surprised we didn't see another Infamous game. Yeah. You know, we, we got Infamous, what, Infamous 3 or 4 at the launch of, yeah. of the PS4, and it's like... Yeah. We never even got another. Like, I'm surprised they didn't even do, like, an infamous remaster where they do, like, a collection of games, the original games remastered or, or something. Like, just doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me why they're calling up short a little bit, in my opinion. Now, Gran Turismo, has that kind of new game lately? Yeah, you had Gran Turismo Sport. Okay. Uh, they they actually announced the other day that they've given over a hundred new cars away for free since the launch of that game. So Holy cow, man. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Because I just feel like they're just lacking somewhere here. They need to figure something out, and I don't know exactly what it is. But I don't feel like... I See, because me personally, I feel like their direction as a company should be pushing on VR right now. They shouldn't be looking to upgrade the five they should be working more on vr and maybe that's part maybe, of why they yeah, are I was gonna say yeah maybe, maybe maybe they're looking because they're looking at yeah. it like we need more power to do what we want to do with a ps with a, with a psvr so five needs to come so we can run psvr smoother because i've said it before where i feel like they need to be wireless with the headset yeah. with the head unit and so maybe that's potentially where we're at and the thing is, we, we are all just assuming that it's coming within the next couple of years. There's been no official announcement that nah, it's coming, but people just assume. I mean, I mean, they are. They, I don't know. It seems like they're winding down. You know, you hear rumors all the time about the PS5 games in development. Mm. You know, who knows? But well, the I thing of it is, just, is because they cancel PSX. Yeah, they're not going to E3. Yeah, so it makes people wonder, like. What's going on? Here? Yeah, they're cooking something up. Yeah, something's coming. Yeah. You know it's coming because why would they cancel these things? Makes no sense. Yeah. So who knows? So that is all. Thank you guys for listening to another episode of the Nintendo PlayStation Podcast. You can follow us. You can follow Toby over on Twitter at Toby's underscore take. You can follow me over on Twitter at Nintendo Gurus. Check us out over on NintendoGuru.com. <laughs> that is all. Uh, peace out, Preston. Don't forget, you've got to check out Benji Kong's 2018 Switch Up. Do it.
Get someone a short notice. What for is a f For a second episode, Bobby, I've got another quiz. <laughs> a third person. Who the f am I going to get at that short of notice, Toby? I don't know, man. Nobody. I can't get somebody that quick. Dude, it's a Sunday. Nobody does anything on a Sunday. It's, f it's, f it's six in the morning. <laughs> Not by the time we finish. Okay, so we'll finish the first one. It'll be 7.30. It's still early, man. <laughs> Get what the Alan? Right. Call Alan. Alan or, or Holly or someone. Um, <coughs> is Alan even on? He might. The problem is when I record with Alan, I record later with him. Yeah. It's it's early for him. He's drunk. Yeah, you're, you're right. <laughs> I'm mean, like, let me see. I don't know. Yeah, I don't mind just doing another another quiz for you, Bobby. I, I mean, if I did it, it's just a matter of making the overlay. It's not a big deal. Yeah. Uh, let me see. Mm. You know, you could have told me this yesterday, day before. Yeah. I could have well, lined I... this all up. No, we just wait till the last minute. You are such a tool bag. You just so, you like making my life difficult. I've got uh, I've got multiple geek outs. So that's all good. I've got a topic for this podcast. I've got news stories for this podcast. And I've got a get your facts straight for this podcast. I didn't do a get your facts straight. You suggested it I now. know, I know, I know. I'm not, I, I am definitely not prepared for that. All right. Well, I've also it. got a geek out for podcast two. And I've got the quiz. But I'm going to hold, so hold, hold Let me, I'm typing a message. Hold on. I mean, should I? Try and come up with another topic just in case. Yeah. All right. I just texted Alan. Okay, hold on. I gotta come up with topics too, anyway. So, so let's 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 calm our cool our jets here. Let me find the thing here. Okay, so Nintendo PlayStation podcast. So this is episode sixteen, right? <clears throat> yeah. The first one. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Well, stop typing and pay attention over here. What the hell? Oh, my God. <clears throat> oh, my God. Look at Bobby's butt. Oh, my God. Look at Bobby's butt. <laughs> <laughs> Are you ready? <clears throat> yeah, I'm ready. All right. What is up, everybody? And welcome to... E mm. Hold on. I got to think this out first. So this would be... I gotta make one change, because I forgot we were changing the season. Ah, uh, yes. This episode would actually still be season two. Yeah. Next episode would be season one. Yep. Well, season <clears throat> three, but episode yep. one. Okay. Oh, this is gonna be so difficult. <clears throat> okay. What is up, everybody, and welcome to season two, episode 16 of the Nintendo PlayStation Podcast.